yeah, it's, it's a huge benefit. I mean, I haven't taken literally any one reps the entire year um, outside of a couple snaps in Detroit, you know, two weeks ago or whatever it was. So, you know, just getting a full week under my belt, you know, with the ones and, um, you know, them getting used to me, me getting used to them, um, you know, it's nothing but helpful the longer you can do it. Jared Stidham, the new starting quarterback of the Broncos, getting the same assignment he got last year late in the season. There's some contractual reasons to put the starter in bubble wrap so it's easier to separate from him after the year. That happened with Derek Carr in Las Vegas. Happened with Russell Wilson in Denver. Stidham comes in. The difference, though, Peter, the Broncos are still alive. If they qualify for the playoffs, it's going to be thanks to Jared Stidham down the stretch, not Russell Wilson. That, to me, is the most surprising aspect of this. Well, Mike, uh, you know, I was off when this happened and I caught up most of yesterday on, you know, I read as much as I could about this. And I think I have just one sort of overriding thought about this. When Sean Payton was caught on camera at a critical point of the game, airing out Russell Wilson on the sidelines, and it never quite came out why it happened and I don't know specifically why it happened but I'm going to tell you why I think it happened Sean Payton has certain rules for his quarterbacks and they can range from you know when to use the silent snap count to uh, you know when to put guys in motion when to all these things he's got little rules and when a quarterback doesn't follow these rules I think he gets highly upset. Now, again, I don't know exactly why it happened, but that was not Sean Payton. At least my gut feeling when I saw it, my first thought was he's not yelling at him for overthrowing somebody or for for whatever. He's yelling at him because he violated one of Sean Payton's or, or several of them real rules about playing the position of quarterback in this offense and I think there have been things and and look we can all say oh my god why are you benching Russell Wilson you still have a prayer to make the playoffs he gives you the best chance well I'm not sure that Sean Payton right now I don't think he would have made this decision honestly if he felt like there was such a huge drop-off between Russell Wilson and Jarrett Stidham and Russell Wilson the last four weeks has engineered an offense, uh, not against the 85 Bears, by the way, but he's engineered an offense that's put up 20 points a game. And I think Sean Payton looks at it, and he basically says, man, you know, I want somebody, at least right now, who's going to follow the rules that I set out and is going to give us a better chance to put more points on the board. And look, we'd all be naive to say the money thing wasn't a part of it. I totally get it. It is a part of it. You know, don't let's let's not be stupid. But I also think that Sean Payton thinks, and again, deep down, what does he really think? I don't know. But I think he believes the quarterback position can be played more efficiently. And for those who would say, well, you know, Russell Wilson is one of these guys who makes a lot of things happen out of the pocket and all that. Well, I get that. But if that was happening consistently, regularly, you know, more than 20 points a game, I would say, okay, then just let Russell Wilson invent some stuff and all that other stuff. But Mike, and the one other thing I believe, I've heard a lot of people say, well, geez, what are they going to do about quarterback for 24? They're going to have to go out and pay to do this. No, they're not. They're going to pay this. They're going to, unless Jarrett Stidham absolutely stinks in the last two weeks, I believe the Broncos will enter 2024 with Jarrett Stidham as their quarterback and see what happens. They'll bring somebody else in and every well, geez, how, how can you do that? Well, I think Sean Payton, who was hired by this team because he knows offense and knows the quarterback position very, very well. If you're not going to give him the freedom to say, I think Jarrett Stidham can play the position right now in this offense as well or better than Russell Wilson. And maybe he won't. I don't know. Maybe Peyton will be wrong. But I also think that they think 
that he's going to give them as good a chance or better a chance to win these last two games than Russell Wilson would. Going back to the interaction that happened on that Saturday night a couple of weeks ago in the game against the Lions, hard to read the lips, but I know from the demeanor, and I know because I've been on the wrong side of that demeanor a time or two in my life, that felt like Peyton saying to Russell, we've been over this 20 bleepity bleep times. I keep telling you this is right. what you need to do. That's how many times do I have to tell you? How many times do I have to yes. tell you this is what you need to do? And so that just felt like the moment that it just kind of snapped, that he became sufficiently exasperated that right. he was willing to give it to Russell Wilson. And, and, and to his credit, Russ took it. Russ stood there and took it. I don't think he's wired to do anything like that publicly because – it wouldn't look good, and, and and that's not the way it's supposed to be. You're not supposed to yell back at your coach. He did the right thing, and from Peyton's perspective, it just felt like that's the moment where the fuse blew. Now, what happened was, and Mark Maskey reported this the other night, and I did a little digging yesterday. After they beat the Chiefs week eight and entered their bye week, because on the surface it looks weird. Why would you reward Russell Wilson for helping end a 16-game losing streak to the Chiefs by approaching him about his contract. But it was during the bye week, and that was the time to do it. And there were communications with Russell Wilson's agent, Mark Rogers, about doing something with his contract. Now, I can't get anyone to tell me specifically what was requested, but I think it's as simple as we've got this $37 million injury guarantee for 2025. It becomes fully guaranteed on the fifth day of the 2024 league year. We need to do something with that trigger. We need to do something to delay when it goes to full guarantee. And my guess would be they wanted to delay it by a year to March of 25. So whatever was asked, the answer was no, we're not doing anything. So now here they are at a point where Peyton weighing who gives us a better chance to win. Russell Wilson refusing to give them the flexibility they'd want because if he's injured out of the final two weeks, can't pass a physical by March 18, they're stuck with the $37 million. And Peter, when you throw on top of it, if Peyton truly believes that Jared Stidham is the guy necessary to give them a spark for the final two weeks, then he doesn't believe Russell Wilson is his franchise quarterback. Then why would you let the $37 million fully vest next year? It's over. The moment you decide my backup quarterback is better than my starter for the final two games, that's when you decide my starter isn't a franchise quarterback. Because if he is a franchise quarterback, he's never going to be benched. He's never going to be the guy who takes the back seat to the guy who signed a two-year, $10 million deal. So it's done. Bottom line is, it's done. It's over. He'll be cut before March 18. He won't be traded. He'll be cut. And then he'll just go somewhere else. And we'll see. we'll see who wants him. And we'll see where he wants to go. And the bottom line in this for Denver right now, Mike, I agree with everything that you said. The bottom line for this right now is that the Denver Broncos, for everybody who predicts salary cap Armageddon for them, if they can play next year with Jarrett Stidham, and that's a big if, okay, but if they can play next year with Stidham, their quarterback position, even with the lead balloon of Russell Wilson's huge number, whatever, 35, 37 million, Whatever it is, <clears throat> the salary cap number for their quarterbacks on the roster next year will still be around 19 or 20 percent. So it's not as crippling as people make it out to be. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.